Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast, and today I want to tell you about some tricks with targeting that a lot of people don't even know exist. From commander to draft, you'll be able to put these to good use. Ready? Let's get started. Okay, so before I can explain some of the tricks, I need to explain how targeting works. Knowing targeting is the building blocks for some of these tricks. When a player casts a spell, they must be able to select all the legal targets for that spell. So, for example, you can't cast a recover without a creature in your graveyard just to draw a card. But you could if it said up to one. For example, Fate's Reversal lets you cast it without a creature in your graveyard just in case you want to venture into the dungeon early on. This is true of all the targets it asks for. Something that trips a lot of people up is you can't cast Decimate without an artifact, creature, enchantment, and land on the battlefield, and you can't cast Hex with fewer than six targets. And if it doesn't say target, then no worries. For example, Grapple with the Past has no target. In fact, your opponent gets no chance between milling the three cards and you selecting the creature or land of return where they can exile the chosen card from your graveyard. Once the spell begins resolving, it all happens before anybody can respond. Okay, so you have that piece of targeting down. Now here's the next part. Once a spell is legally cast, it will continue to resolve and do as much as it can unless it loses all its targets. So, for example, let's say I cast that same recover targeting a creature. In response, my opponent exiles that creature. The target is no longer legal, so I won't draw a card. But similarly, I cast Decimate with all four targets, but in response, someone sacrifices their creature. The spell still has three legal targets, so it still continues to resolve even though one of the targets is missing. All right, got it? Good. Let me show you the four places you can really use this to your advantage and some example cards it comes up with. Number one, target and sacrifice. Okay, so if you target multiple things and at least one is still around, the spell still resolves doing as much as it can. This gives you a window to do some sneaky tricks. Take Boom Bust as an example. You can cast Boom, targeting your fetch land and their regular land. All targets legal, but then, in response to casting the spell, you can sacrifice your fetch land to get a new land. Boom goes to resolve, and even though one of its original targets is gone, its other original target, your opponent's land, is still legal. Your opponent's land goes bye-bye while you don't lose anything. This only works with a very specific class of cards, but when it comes up with something like Aether Trade Winds or Reckless Rage to double dip on your dying creature, you feel like an absolute genius. Sometimes you have to decimate your own artifact just to have enough legal targets, and at least sacrificing it in response will give you that bit of extra value that could eke out the game. Number two, removing a stray target. As I said before with Recover, if its target is gone, you won't draw a card. Recover is a straightforward example, but there's a lot of cards which target, and you might not even think about it. For example, here's a classic, Cryptic Command. This card has two targeted modes and two that don't target. So let's say your opponent chooses to bounce one of your creatures and tap all other creatures. Well, if you Doomblade that creature in response, suddenly there's no valid target and the whole spell stops working. This is probably the trick I use most often. Whether stopping targeted removal spells on my creatures that draw cards like Parting Thoughts, or killing my opponent's creature in response to a pump spell or ability that will draw them cards, like any of the Skull Bombs. It's very useful. Keep an eye out for the word target as well, because some cards may surprise you. A classic one for me is Gifts Ungiven. This powerful spell that searches your library for cards, unlike its fact or fiction brethren, has a sneaky little target opponent nestled in there. So a card like Gilded Light can actually counter it. The target is no longer legal on resolution, so the whole spell is countered. I actually remember playing Ivory Mask to preemptively shut off their Gifts Ungiven. Wild. Number three, denying a target. This is a tricky one, but when it comes up, can decide the game. If you have a good read that your opponent needs you to play a certain kind of card for something targeted to function, sometimes it's right to not play your cards. For example, let's say you just drafted Dominaria Remastered, and you know their deck has Decimate. If you spot an artifact, creature, and land on the battlefield, maybe you hold back that enchantment instead of playing it. Or, for another example, your opponent can't cast Searing Blaze to deal 3 damage to you if you don't have a creature on the battlefield. Don't play a creature until you gain life, or make sure it's at least one with Hexproof and your Searing Blaze safe. Be aware of what targets your opponent needs, and sometimes you can play around them. 
Number 4. No target? No problem! Finally, one of the easiest ways to break symmetry is to play a card that doesn't have a target at all when only your opponent is hurt by it. Take Innocent Blood, for example. You don't need a creature in play to cast this. You just cast it and each player sacrifices a creature whether they have one or not. Many cards help keep their effects safe this way. For example, Return of the Wild Speaker is a card where you'll always draw equal to your highest power among non-human creatures. It doesn't target. So even if they kill your 5-5 in response, a remaining 3 3 Beast will still net you 3 cards. It's worth noting too that some of the spells that work this way have you choose something on resolution, so keep in mind that you don't need to pick until everybody is ready for the spell to resolve. For example, with Kindred Dominance, you don't choose the type until the spell resolves. So if you control 3 zombies and 2 demons, and they kill one of your demons in response, maybe you want to choose zombies now. Ok, now with those 4 points said, 2 important exceptions to all of this. There are some classes of cards, like fighting and exchanging, that require both creatures to be on the battlefield for it to happen. The fight, or exchange, can't occur if one of them is gone, so no laying down a bushwhack and then sacrificing sacrificing your creature. If you were already thinking that though, at this point in the video, I do like where your head's at. The other one is when you do. This is some newer technology you'll occasionally see on cards. Some cards will have a when you do referring to a previous thing, so you don't target something until after the first event happens. For example, take Hypothesis. You don't choose the target creature to deal 4 damage to until you discard a non-land card and that ability is put on the stack, so you can't counter it by removing a target because there isn't a target when when the spell is cast. Compare this with, say, Blast of Genius. If you remove that target, the whole spell stops working. So there you have it, 4 targeting tricks. If I taught you at least one new thing today, let me know what it was in the comments down below. I'd be very curious to find out what people didn't know. I'll talk with you again soon, and in the meantime, have fun getting tricky. You got this! Just straight up, first strike, only on your turn. It's been around here and there a while, I mean Barrage had Barrage of Urborg for example, but you've really seen it accelerate since Guilds of Ravnica. Fresh faced recruit in Guilds, into Pouncing Lynx, On Crop Invader, and Nahiri, Storm of Stone in War of the Spark really brought this back 